This video is sponsored by Fabulous. The deep sea can be a lonely place. The dark expanse appears endless, and life seems sparse and isolated. However, deep sea biodiversity relies on these scattered organisms interacting in order to survive. Whether they're working together in symbiosis, scavenging, being predated, or parasitizing a host animal. But there is one ecological interaction that does more than any other to influence organisms to change and diversify, and thus plays an important role in the success of deep sea communities. Let's take a closer look at competition in the deep sea, and how it shapes this unique ecosystem, along with its inhabitants. Surviving in the deep sea is a challenge. Here, the low oxygen levels and scarce nutrients means the resources that organisms require are hard to come by. As a result, there is conflict between animals that strive for the same resources in the same place. In other words, competition is fierce. Animals throughout the ocean each belong to different trophic levels of the food web. These are the hierarchical layers in an ecosystem, each made up of organisms with the same feeding behaviour, whether it be as producers, predators, or prey. This is important, considering that much of the marine world's competition takes place between animals belonging to the same trophic level. For example, sharks compete with other top predators, like killer whales, with both requiring abundant space and similar prey to eat. Grazers compete with other grazers for space on the rocks. Producers like plants compete with other producers to procure the most sunlight. In the shallows, this kind of competition can lead to there being a huge diversity of creatures, simply because nutrients and other resources are abundant with plenty to go around. But, in the depths of the open ocean, the far more limited resources mean only a small number of niches can exist. A niche is the ecological role or way of life that a species can occupy. And with only a few of these available in the deep, there is greater competition between different species trying to fill the same niches. This explains why the deep sea has so much competition, for animals must share the ecosystem with other competing species, all trying to consume the same limited resources. But competition does not always arise in the same way. In fact, it comes in two different forms. First is inter-specific competition, which occurs between members of different species. The second form 
intraspecific competition occurs between members of the same species. If you struggle to remember which is which, consider that the word international means between different nations. Some of the best deep sea communities that demonstrate interspecific competition are found on the very bottom of the ocean. Out on the abyssal plain, space may be abundant for benthic communities, but the lack of food or shelter means their chances of survival are low. So instead, many creatures congregate in high abundance around certain hotspots of activity. From sunken whale carcasses to chemically rich brine pools and superheated hydrothermal vents. Places where energy is released and food is bountiful. These are ecosystems that boast high species richness but where the rocks are overcrowded with competing organisms, all attempting to position themselves in the best spot, or scavenge what they can. This has led to examples of symbiosis arising, allowing organisms to live in comfortable coexistence with other species, while relying on them for survival. But this is only the case when organisms have something to gain from one another. For example, at hydrothermal vents, giant tube worms rely on the energy released by chemosynthetic bacteria that convert dissolved chemicals in the heated water into nutrients. A different species, the yeti crab, also relies on the same bacteria for the exact same reason. So, while there may be symbiosis between the animals and the bacteria, there is simultaneously competition between the crabs and tube worms, for space on the rocks and for possession of the bacteria. This is an example of interspecific competition. And it is not just tube worms and yeti crabs that compete over the same bacteria. Deep sea shrimps, mussels, and squat lobsters all fulfill similar ecological niches. And so all are competing for the same resources in the same place. Often, interspecific competition can lead to the extinction of one of the species competing. The organism that is less well adapted may lose out on the resources it needs, meaning members of that species are less likely to survive. They become out-competed. This is because species with identical niches also have identical needs. The idea that in a stable ecosystem, no two species can have exactly the same niche and stably coexist is known as the competitive exclusion principle. But when this doesn't lead to extinction, interspecific competition instead causes specialization of the different animals. A phenomenon called resource partitioning occurs, where species with overlapping fundamental niches evolve different adaptations. It helps the species coexist because there is less direct competition between them. This is what occurred at hydrothermal vents to make them so stable. The competing crabs, worms and shrimps may all be in pursuit of the same resources, but they have developed very different ways of acquiring them. As a result, each of these species are utilizing only a part of the wider niche they could have used if they were the only species in the ecosystem. 
let's take a look at the ways they've changed in order to coexist. Yeti crabs farm the bacteria in filamentous colonies on their bodies, reducing the pressure on the crabs to compete for space with other species, like the shrimps. The crabs are able to move around and take the bacteria with them. Contrastingly, the tube worms are sessile, meaning they are fixed in one place and cannot move. Their competitive advantage arises from their ability to store the bacteria within their tubes, effectively holding them captive and benefiting from all of the nutrients they produce. Another denizen of deep sea vents, the Pompeii worm, farms bacterial colonies in a similar fashion to Yeti crabs. But it still behaves very differently. It inhabits locations on the vent structures that are far hotter than those that the crabs can tolerate. This means the worms and crabs have become behaviorally isolated from one another. The different adaptations and behaviours of these creatures means that they can all share the same bacteria without getting in each other's way. So, unlike in the open ocean, where low resources lead to low diversity, the opposite is the case here, and the abundant resources at deep sea vents allow the ecosystem to boast high diversity, due to competition driving these species to specialise in different ways. In the deep sea, conflict between individuals of the same species is the most common form of competition. This is because the large distances and vast expanses of the depths leads to geographical isolation of competing species, therefore reducing competition as they simply migrate to different locations where they can fulfil the same niche without disturbing one another. But for members of the same species, conflict is unavoidable. Whether animals fight over territory, or attempt to court potential partners prior to mating, they are competing. And these interactions are just as important as the ones discussed in Chapter 2. Group hunting techniques demonstrate how intraspecific competition is a basic factor in natural selection. At night, groups of up to 40 Humboldt squid swim upwards to prey upon schools of lanternfish. While they may be working together to corral their prey, they are also in direct competition with one another. Those that are stronger and faster are likely to catch more fish than smaller, weaker individuals. In fact, they have been known to turn to cannibalism, with larger Humboldt squids picking off the smaller members of their own school. In a brutal display of survival of the fittest, this leads to the evolution of better adaptations within the species, as those with the advantageous characteristics will outcompete their lesser rivals and be more likely to reproduce. In other words, the best competitors are the ones who survive and get to pass on their genes. Competition is a very important part of understanding the ecology of the deep sea. Many aspects of this ecosystem are influenced by these interactions. The ways in which animals compete with each other determines how species are distributed, as well as community structures, food webs, and population dynamics. 
And over time, these interactions lead to behavioural and physical adaptations in a species that shape its evolution. On the sea floor, resource partitioning allows one niche to be shared among many organisms. In a similar fashion, geographical isolation in the midwater zone allows an abundance of pelagic inhabitants to coexist. Together, these processes and principles demonstrate how important competition is to the biodiversity of the deep sea. Today's video is sponsored by Fabulous, the number one self-care coaching app that makes it easy for anyone to develop and stick to healthy habits. With its science-backed daily routines, Fabulous can help you feel healthier and more productive through either a guided or self-guided approach. What I find particularly appealing about Fabulous is just how personalized, gentle, and rewarding it can be. Personally, I use the morning mindfulness exercises to help start my day and declutter my brain. But there are many other ways you can use the app. Choose whether you want to focus on mental health, physical health, or self-discipline with daily coaching sessions or habit tracking capabilities. Start building your ideal daily routine. The first 100 people to visit the link below will get a free one-week trial and 25% off a fabulous subscription.